Damp Sam here, Britain's most straightforward, down to earth talking qualified surveyor, damp specialist. Um, I could go on. Um, and I've got another video that I'm going to watch, and I'm only going to watch it because I've just seen this video. It just said Rick Gannon mold, and uh, Rick Rick is on lots and lots of stuff, and he's on he's on progressive community. So I thought, why not roll VT? Than of one of our uh, blocks of flats. It's just a beautiful place. It's a lovely sunny day. Now we've come here today to do a video on something called EnviroVent. Now for those landlords that are out there and tenants that are struggling with black mould issues in really old properties that don't really have very good ventilation, then we've started to install EnviroVent systems, which eradicates the black mould, makes it a nice fresh place to be, and we pay for all of the electric as well, so it doesn't cost the tenants anything. So we're having one installed this morning, so I thought we'd come along this morning and show you what it's all about. Right, so this flat's got its own little patio doors. Um, so the main entrance to the flat is around the other side of the... So I, I'll, just, I'll just comment straight away. So EnviroVent, EnviroVent is a company um, that make vents, they make different vents, um, but EnviroVent, is a company name um i'm almost certain and they make piv units they make fans uh wall mounted piv units and it's it looks like he's got a um it says it's ground floor flat and i'm tipping because it's ground floor flat this is going to be a wall mounted piv but i could be wrong the main entrance to the flat is around the other side of the building but it's got its own little patio doors here as well um so it's beautiful on a day like today. How, what more would you want? No right. mould. So we're back in this flat today and we've been in here for a couple of videos now because we're going through a refurb process. Um, so what we're going to do is this little unit here is the EnviroVent Limited unit. Oh, let me we're going to put it up in the... It is going to be a wall mounted one. So it looks like they're going to have to core drill through wall and then get an electrician to fit it. So we've got a spur there for the uh, electrics and it's going to plug into there and it's a silent running machine as well. So the engineer's here, we're going to have a chat with him when he comes back in. I'm going to find out a little bit more about how it works and what it does, etc. Okay, so Chris. Good morning. How are you doing? All right. Yeah. So we're here to put an Enviro vent. Is that, is that well, right? What it is, it's a, uh, a wall mounted positive input ventilation unit. Oh, positive. All right, wanna. So it's a, a wall mounted PIV unit. Um, Good, good units, good units. I mean, there's lots of companies that do them. Um, we've fitted quite a few in um, properties that we've got and um, properties for customers as well. And you tend to have these fitted rather than a, a, a loft mounted unit because um, it's just for access, really, because no loft above it, is there? Ventilation unit. Oh, positive input, input so ventilation. PIV. That's it, yeah. So it's manufactured by EnviroVent. So uh, from a quality perspective. So there you go. So it's manufactured by EnviroVent. They've probably got a different, they've got, they've, they'll have a name for it. So that'll be their whatever F3 Mark 1 wall mounted unit. So that'll probably name. So the, the vent is not called EnviroVent. The company that make them as called environment and they, they have their own fitting teams as well and, and, and they do their own surveys as well. We're, from a quality perspective it's all British made, made in Harrogate yeah. um, and basically what the unit does it takes a feed of fresh air from, from outside, outside so constant supply of fresh air it's all about getting a volume of air into a property without having to open windows right so what this unit does is it pulls a constant uh, volume of fresh air yep. through the unit. Yep. It runs it over a filter right. to stop things like bugs and nasties coming in. Yep. And then it forces it under pressure into the flat. What that does is it uses a scientific principle which is called dilution, dispersal and replacement. So what it does is it by pushing the air in, like having windows and doors open, it yep. starts to dilute the air. The air becomes cleaner and fresher. Right. So I'll just add to this <clears throat> what happens is because it's it's mounted up I mean, I was doing my hands, but because uh, it's mounted up near the ceiling, the um the exhaust or the 
pipe that that pulls the air from the outside that that pushing it in gently it's supposed to be gentle i think it's got different speeds but it um it feeds this air in at ceiling height and um that mixes with the air that's already in the property which is normally warmer so even though i don't know whether that's got a a, a heat exchanger in so that that the air is warm when it comes in but it, it in theory it's supposed to mix with the um the inside air and because it's continuously coming in it um creates a positive pressure and it pushes the heavier damp air out through fissures cracks and this is why they say you can keep the windows shut sure it then dis displaces dis displaces <laughs> as bad as me. contaminants in the air so it will drive down humidity it'll help to force out things like um, moisture smells yep. all that kind of thing and then it replaces i don't know whether it gets rid of smells um i, I don't know whether that's in paperwork but um i, I think if if it's if it's mixing if, if you've got cleaner air coming in and just cooked a bacon sarni. I suppose it, it will dilute it, but whether it'll get rid of it that quick, I don't know. I think you'd still smell it for a while. Um, I, I, I don't know whether it gets rid of smells. It probably does because it, it it will eventually get rid of it, but how quickly we don't know. I don't I don't think they'd put that in in their literature that that that's one of that's one of its um, things. I think he might have just added that. They're in the property with this constant supply of fresh air. So in effect, under normal circumstances, one of these in a flat this size would probably replenish the quantity of air inside the flat probably once a day. Wow. So every day you get a complete brand new set of fresh air coming through the flat. So that he's saying that you're gonna get a, a, a one complete air change per day in that flat. So I'll just tell you. I'll, I'll I'll just give you an example, um, and I and I bring this up up a lot. That um, in basements, so if it were a basement flat, building regulations state that you need to have four air changes per hour. Four air changes per hour. So that's a full air change in that room every fifteen minutes. It's impossible. You can't do it. Um, I don't know what building regulations are for a ground floor flat, but in a basement, and it, and it's something to do with um, if you are painting and and decorating and stuff like that, noxious um, vapors and things like that that come off of paint. And so I'm led to believe. I could be wrong, but so I'm led to believe. On with the show. Yeah, coming through the flat. So that does eradicate all the black mold issues. That yeah, you what it does because. Black mould is... Now, what happens with... The, there's various issues that we get in properties in the UK. One of which is we suffer with high humidity because yeah. we're not very well ventilated. Yeah, especially in old yeah, buildings. That's right. Yeah. And we're not exactly what you would call very well insulated in a lot of cases either. So what happens is, in the summertime, when it's a beautiful day like today, as air temperature rises, indoor relative humidity will naturally fall right. because it's temperature-driven. Temperature driven. In the wintertime... When suddenly the air temperature starts to fall, the relative humidity starts to rise. And if you have poor ventilation in a property or not very good extraction in a bathroom or something like that, what happens is that moisture hangs around in the air. Now to you and I, it's invisible. You can't yeah. see it. If it was a green cloud, you'd know what was happening, but it's not, it's invisible. So what happens is eventually, and it normally happens overnight, as air temperatures fall, relative humidity rises. As soon as you hit a 70% indoor relative humidity breakpoint, the air in your home or the air in a property can't hold the water as a gas. I'm not sure if it's air outside that... Uh, I think that might have an effect, air outside going down. But what tends to happen is in properties, um, you've got eating on through the day or when you get in, back in from work, when you go to bed, you turn eating off. So... This is this is what the problem is, is <coughs> excuse me, that um, the air temperature inside 
drops. And like I've spoke before about air molecules being able to hold moisture, so the air molecules expand and contract. So inside, if you've got warmer air, your air molecules are expanded, and if they're filled with water, when they contract, when you turn heating off, when you go to bed, can't hold that water anymore. So they'll condense on surfaces, um, which is at the dew point, um, and they're normally colder surfaces. And sometimes you get surfaces with cold spots, which are even colder. So they tend to show up wetter first. Can't hold the water as a gas anymore. Right. Turns back to a liquid, leaps on a cold surface. So that's why you see condensation on windows, yep. see condensation on tiles. It then turns into black mold. And then what happens is if you get 80% relative humidity at the surface for more than six hours, black mold will start to grow. Oh, okay. If you have a propensity for high humidity, what you've got, as soon as mold spores take root, because they're just mushrooms, yep. and they, you carry them in on your clothes, on your shoes, you can't get rid of them. But basically, once they take root... Um, I'm not sure whether you, you're bringing them in on your clothes and as, such, as mushrooms. Um, they are a fungus. M mushrooms are a fungus, um, but you've got mold spores in your air, and I've got them in here. There's millions and mil billions and billions, trillions and trillions, gazillions, and they're just in the air. And when conditions are right for that type of mold spore, they, um, they will germinate and grow. Um, and you've got different funguses and things like that. So they're in the air anyway. It's like dry rot. It's the, 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 the spores are in the air. It's just when conditions are met, when conditions are right for them to germinate and to grow, that's when they'll start to form. They're in the air anyway. You're not bringing them in like off, on your claws. They're just there anyway. They'll be coming in through, <laughs> even with filter on, they'll be coming in through um, PIV unit. The, the mold spores, because they're, they're, they're that minute, they're, they're that tiny. On with the show! They take root. If you've got a high humidity problem, you've just got your own little mold. Who's that? Right. You're just watering it over and over again. Somebody just walked past window. They're right away through there. Like Clapham Junction. It's growing. This flat particularly yeah. suffered a lot from moisture. A right, lot of moisture okay. Because, um, well, I don't, obviously it's, you know, the, the, the walls aren't very well insulated yeah. because it's old. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether the, the female... Rick, it's not to do with walls. Well, it is in a way. You ain't got a, I bet you ain't got a fan in there. That cooker hood, is it vented externally? I doubt it, but you ain't got a fan in the kitchen. I think you could have saved yourself some money and put a, a continuously running fan in that kitchen in a HR fan and made sure there were one in a uh, bathroom and any en suites, mate. Mm. I don't know whether the, the female tenant that was in here before was airing the property. Right. But I came in and literally, you know, you can open the cupboards and all of the cardboard boxes were sodden. It uh, was that bad. Nasty. So yeah. is this going to... Rick, you can't blame the tenants now for lifestyle. And listen, I, th I don't think he is doing now. I think it look, it look, it's, it's been a... Um, a landlord who is responsible and is fitting this unit. Um, and this is what a homes fit for human habitation says that you can't be um, reactive. You've got to be proactive and Rick is being proactive. So he's got a void in his property and he's fixing any issues. And this is what the, um, the bill says um, must happen. In between voids, fix these properties. And if it's, if it's really bad, you know, fix them while tenants are in. Is this going to get rid of this that? This will go a long, long way to eradicating that. Right, yeah, okay. absolutely. Now, what about temperature, Chris? So is it right, going to make the air colder? No, right. If you look at the unit, um, I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, you Could can you see it in here. So one of, the, one of the issues with air from outside is that when it's minus two outside, the air temperature is minus two. Yeah. And what you don't want is that picked up, sped up, 
and pushed in because that will come in then at about one degree centigrade, yes. freezing cold. Yeah. If you look down inside, just down in there, you'll see there's a little heater element. Right. So what the unit does... It's quite a big heater element, actually. Yeah, well, yeah. In, in here, there's what's called a, a themistor. So what it does is it permanently senses the temperature okay. of the air flowing through the unit. Right. If the air temperature flowing through it drops below 10%, it pulses the heater element. Okay. So it won't run the heat element all the time. It drop before, below 10%. I think it means drops below 10 degrees. The, um, the units that sit in the... Um, in the roof space, <coughs> excuse me, um, in the summer, if the, um, you, you can set some of the, some of the better units, you can set the, um, the limits yourself, but they've got a factory setting. And I think the one in the, um, what we use, if, uh, if the temperature is higher than 20 degrees, it stops and then when it gets below 20 degrees, it starts again, because you don't want red hot air coming in when it's hot outside. And then it's same in winter, you don't want freezing air coming in. And it, it, it does same. So if it's, if it's freezing cold in a uh, rural space, I think some units will stop. But if it's got a heat exchanger in, because you don't want that cold air coming in, but if it's got a heat exchanger in, like this one, the heat exchanger kicks in when it gets below a certain temperature, and I think what he's going to say is that it will constantly put um, heat in at 10 degrees. And what these are good for, um, as well as you know regulating your um, condensation and things like that and humidity inside a property, if it, the property is left untenanted, so if you've got one of these and you've got a void in, in winter and it becomes freezing, then you're not going to get freezing air inside your uh, property and you're not going to get these bus pipes like what I had at <laughs> Wakey Road um, about 20 years ago. No, 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 no. 14 years ago. Um, learned a big lesson with that. And the air doesn't feel hot, but what it does, it does what's called tempering. So it just tempers the air. Right. But the other that's thing, automatic. Yeah, it's automatic. So you don't have to do anything with that. Right. Um, and what, what it will do then, so tempered air will move around the flat a lot better. It will also help the heating to be a little bit more efficient. Right. Because what happens with a radiator, heated air, is it rises up and goes across the ceiling. Yeah. And what these units do is because the air is always moving inside a flat or inside a property, what that does is it carries the warm air around. And he explained that eloquently. That's, that's, a, that's a great explanation. What what these units do, and it's same with the um, loft mounted ones. A lot some people complain about them having a draft, and they might be fitted wrong. But what they do is they circulate the air in the property uh, inside the property, so you're getting air moving around. So if you if if you have got a cold spot, this um, cleaner air is going to go into them uh, corners and behind furniture. You're not going to get dead pockets of air where you're going to get condensation and mould forming. And that's what the beauty of these units are. And, and a lot of our customers turn down their heating by right. 10%. Don't really? Don't notice a difference, yeah. So tell me then, so one unit like this, so this is like the unit you can put in flats without any roof space. Because there's right, loads yeah. of different ones, isn't there? Yes, there is. So this is perfect. We've had one of these installed in one of the other flats as well, haven't we? So with this, how will it help in a room that's got a closed right, door okay. into the, the door next door. It's going to say <clears throat> it's positive pressure. Because some people, I watched another, uh, another one of these and, and they were saying, um, I think it was Charlie DIY or something, it was a posh guy. And they were saying about making sure that you have a 10 mil gap under your door. That, shouldn't really matter because there's positive air pressure the 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 unit is bringing in constant air so it forces the damp air out through fissures and cracks and these fissures and cracks can be tiny so uh, it will force it into other rooms if it has got a gap it probably will circulate better but um you've got to be careful where you where you're fitting them because if there's a, an extractor fan, you don't want that air coming in and then it 
creating like a wind tunnel effect and then that clean air that you've brought in from outside that's been filtered going straight out of the um, extractor fan hole. The best way to illustrate it is with a, a, I don't know if there's any glasses or anything here. Probably not in here. Like, like just like a gel cleaner. He's yeah. got a pair on. Rick's got some on. Right, let's run some, some glasses there. Water into there. Oh, glass, you know, <laughs> glass. Right. Here we go. So that water has got all suds all on the top. Yep. So imagine that's the contaminated air, air inside the, the property. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're going to run a constant supply of fresh air in. What it will do is it will take away... Just making it <laughs> bubble even more. Diluting and yeah. replacing. Yeah. And eventually the water will even more. Because you right. put what was you not like going how in? does that get through the walls? <laughs> it doesn't go through the walls. Yeah. So it's the air that's it's the air yeah. that's actually in that's the... That's it, yeah. So what it does is it fills the fills the place up with air and then it gets everywhere because right. no no room is perfectly sealed. Sure. So it'll go under a fire And when door. people open the door... That's it, and, yeah, okay. definitely. So yeah. one unit like that, how big a flat could you right. service? Right, you with? could probably... With one of these, you could do a three-bedroom apartment. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And you don't need any loft space? No, no. If with our loft... With the loft-based unit that the Envirovent manufacture... Um, that will do up to a six bedroom house. Wow. Concept is exactly the same. Yeah. But what it's doing is instead of taking air from outside, because you. With the loft units, um, what, the ones that we fit, <coughs> and they're all kind of much or muchness, they're all to them similar. Um, you've got different settings. So you can have a small house, medium, large house. Um, so, uh, like I said, it'll do up to a six bedroom house. They are good units. What it's doing is instead of taking air from outside, because you, you've got no loft, we've got no loose air we can use here. Right. In a house, what it does is it pulls fresh air through the loft. So it freshens the loft, then it runs that fresh air through a filter. What freshens loft? Did it, what did he say then? It freshens loft. I think what he means is in a loft, you, you, um, your loft should be ventilated. So it should, a loft should be well ventilated. Um, and when you're going to fit one, you need to survey that area to make sure it's ventilated because you, you don't want a, a loft that's full of condensation because that could cause issues inside. So you need to make sure that your loft is well ventilated if you're going to fit one of these units in, and then it will bring that cleaner air to your property because it does filter it as well and pushes it again into the house constantly. But it does all this from a central location in yeah. the, in, on the landing. Because I've seen those, because when I was researching these, I'm yeah. like, well, can we even get one? Because we don't have loft space. Yeah. And then, of course, we got into it. Should have rung me, Rick. I'd have told you. And, and you came out. And did you yeah. install the one? Yes. Door? I'm on, uh, what is, whatever it is, Progressive. Yeah. The one went in there that's a white well. one. We've got a black one here. Or is it no, this is, this is a white. Right, okay. Because it's, once it's finished... Oh, you put the casing over it. It has all the cover over it. I got you. So, Chris, how much are we paying for these? These know? are 995 plus VAT. 995 plus VAT. I, I, that must be fitted. We charge more than that for um, ones that we fit. I think for them, I think we charge about 1500 or 1500 something like that. Um, about 1500 plus VAT. So... Like I said, there's cheaper, there's cheaper models, um, and it's like oh, there's companies that have cheaper models. We use um, Elta, huge fans from Elta, and uh, they've got good units. I've I've also used Sovereign, their Concure units, although they've changed it now from Concure to a different unit. Um, I've used AXA. Um, don't get me started on AXA because they let me down big style when uh, when when we were on lockdown. Uh, they just went missing. Um, I've used quite a few. Um, and I know people that use Envirovent think Leap Precision uses Envirovent. I think they do their fitting as well.
Nine five plus VAT. Nine 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 plus VAT. Is that including fitting? Yeah, that's including fitting. Right. So nine nine yeah. five plus VAT, including fitting. That is an absolute bargain because if you can save yourself just one void a year, then it's going to pay for itself. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. And it's going to give the tenants a much nicer place to live in a much nicer yeah. environment. From a landlord's perspective as well. Yeah. When it's running, I could probably illustrate this on the other one. To be okay. fair. Okay. Well, that's but I think when there's, it's there's running, a tenant in there. Right. Yeah. You've got control over. It's got four speeds. One, two, three, four. And there's a little button here. Now, a lot of the time what will happen is tenants might have a problem come back or they might suddenly get a new mold problem. It does happen. Yeah. What we find sometimes has happened is that tenants are founding clever ways of turning them off. Yeah. Because okay. they think they're using loads of electricity or they're yeah. making them cold. Definitely. Yeah. There's a little button there. You press that button, you get a little readout of the running hours. It tells you how many hours. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Yeah. It's a quick calculation. And, you can and see that will flash through off. and tell you how many Is there an override that you can't like that. turn them off? Uh, there is. We fit them with a, a few spur like yeah. that. Yeah. And then what you can do as a landlord, they come, they come with a, a front panel. To just put it over the top. And what you can do as a landlord is you can yeah. seal that off. So can we make sure we got, I think we're missing that panel on that Yeah, one. I know. I've, yeah, I've given yeah. one to, uh, to K. To K yeah. So in terms of running costs, now um, just for everyone that's watching this video, this is going back to my supply. So the landlord supply, so I'm paying for this. So it doesn't cost the tenant anything. So we don't want to incentivize them to turn it off. No. So we want them to have a nice, you know, yeah. a nice environment, a nice clean, fresh air. So we don't worry about paying for the bills. But these are, they're not expensive to run, um, and, but I think tenants, um, they see any mechanical device and they just think it's costing them a lot of money. But a lot of these units and a lot of modern fans, they're low carbon, so the cost, the cost hardly anything to run. When we first started fitting these, and I think what... Um, but it was. I think they said it will. It, it will. It will less than two quid a year. So, um, and listen, I know some people can't afford two quid a year, but they won't be renting any of my properties. But um, yeah, two quid a year. All the bills. But for those people that are going to charge the tenants, how much would it cost to? Right. Rent? They cost about the same as a hundred watt bulb for twelve months. So it really? used to be about sixty pound a year. Right. Um, yeah, that's going to be yeah. double, probably <laughs> yeah. double that now. Probably yes. Right. So I, I mean, I would a bit cheaper. Than, <laughs> it's a bit more expensive than that one I fitted. I work with a lot of landlords, and, and I've got some landlords where they install these, and what they say is, "Look, Mister Tenant, it's ten quid off your rent. Yeah, pay for it. Yeah, because not everybody. Laundry farm and two quid a month, two quid a week." Yeah. Because not everybody can do like a landlord. And then supply. they learn to switch it off, so they're going to get ten pound off yeah. the rent, and they're not going to have any of that. I know that's the proviso, but then we seal them from behind. But I'm guessing. I mean, this flat now is actually quite clean. Um, yeah. it's, getting, it's getting decorated, so there's not a lot of moisture here because we've been in and out. Yeah. And the girl that was here before was travelling away a lot, so it was all sealed mm. up. So I'm guessing in six months' time, after this has been in, we come back and do an inspection. It will be obvious whether they've been using it or not, just from what's around. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It will yeah. be obvious. Yeah. Fantastic. These and should be. These should be government backed. You should get grants yeah, for these, you know, because we. The thing is, idea, all the way that, to, you know, we had the pandemic. Very good idea. Yeah. The, the one thing that everybody missed the trick of was a very simple fresh air solution. Yeah. That would push fresh air into your home, drive away and get rid of the viral load, make it so that it's basically like you're outside, and the government. Could have just put them under prescription or yeah. given me a thousand pound a unit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's or said to every household, I agree. Yeah. you know, just to them them agree. I think they're a great invention. They're a brilliant. I idea, don't know yeah. why I've never used them before. Um, we've never really had a problem with black mould in our because we've got quite a big portfolio. Yeah. So we've got about 150 tenants. Multi-millionaire, that lad. Multi-millionaire since he's since he come out at Coppers. But this particular property yeah. over the last two or three years has started to give us a right, few issues. Okay. And he's on TikTok. TikTok sensation. Okay. And because it's listed, and yeah. because it's so big, I know that this is just a sticking plaster. This isn't sorting out the main cause of the problem, mm. but it is addressing it. Oh, absolutely. The main cause of the problem here probably wouldn't ever be able to be sorted out because we can't go into the walls, there's no cavity no. for us to be able to put... Rick, you needed, you needed adequate ventilation in there, mate. Get some... Got some proper fans in there, it's not to do with insulation. Insulation, yes. And um, we can get trickle vents in the windows, but having listed buildings consent to change the windows, and yeah. it's a long. Oh, well, you never mentioned it were a listed building, Rick, at the beginning. Never mentioned it were a listed building. 
So we listed buildings. Um, sometimes you can't even core drill through a wall. So um, some walls you can core drill through, some you can't. If you're going to fit in a listed building, you need to know why it's listed, what um, the criteria for list for it being listed is, because is it is it the fascia? If it's the if it's the front facade, you might not be able to put any features on there. Like he's just said, we we trickle vents for windows. So um, I'm surprised they've let you core drill a, a fan in there. That's a really good walkthrough. Thank you for that. That's I know right. we're taking about 20 minutes of your time. <laughs> you've, got, right. you've got work Don't to worry. do. Yeah. Uh, so for those people that are watching, I mean, yeah. if people want to contact you personally to find out more about this, how can they do that? Um, you can get me at um, chris at mvsservices.co.uk. MVS, Mike MV Victor Sierra. Mike Victor Sierra Services, all one road, yep. all one word, .co.uk. Um, and you can get me on 01384 387008. Awesome. I'll I'm put those I'll put the yeah. details in the link into the video description. And and I know that we're paying, as I say, about a thousand pounds for these at the moment. I'm absolutely loving the one we've got. This is the second one. What we'll do is we'll do another video in about six months. We'll come back and then obviously with the tenant's consent, have a look around to see what the changes have been. Absolutely, and then yeah. we can do a bit of an update and a bit of a comparison. So yeah. Chris, thank you so much. No worries. I'd have liked to see issues um that they had before. I know you said there's something about um, we inside cupboards, but um, I'd have liked to see issues, Rick. No worries. It's been Thank excellent. You. Thank nice you. to meet Cheers. you. So that's Rick's vid uh, Rick's um, video on PIV units. I didn't know what I was going to expect um, when I when I started it. I, I've not watched it before. Like I said, most of videos, I'll, well, all videos, um, I react to them as uh, as as I see them, as you see them, and. Um, I enjoyed that and I've learned, like on that last video, I learned something there um, about PIV units and stuff, even though I fit them myself. So uh, great video, Rick. Keep the keep up the good work and uh, you're counting all that money you're earning, pal. See you on next. And this is Damp Sam signing off. Bye-bye now. <laughs>